I'd like to tell you a fascinating story today about uh, Baroness Matilda von Reed in Finland, who was a co-worker with Dr. Bedeker. But before I do that, just a little update. I gave a talk recently, a story about Moldova and how a family who the brother traveled with Bedeker and translated as they traveled across Russia, that they had been threatened People were being slaughtered during the Armenian Holocaust and how a Russian had stood in the door, their lives had been spared and so on. Well, I got a subsequent Facebook note from a brother who is a missionary from Australia in Moldova, who told me that his wife's grandparents were Armenian believers and had escaped to England at that time of the slaughter and uh, that they now serve the Lord there in Moldova, and he sent a photo of the prison that Bedeker visited in the capital, and a very interesting response, and said, we're visiting among the local churches here, and we would like to take your series on the church, or your notes, and translate them both into Romanian and Armenian, and so he started on this project. So it was very encouraging. My son David was reading through the book, suggested that story, and how it rippled across, and here, the work of God in Moldova. It's just, just so exciting to me. God runs this amazing network, and uh, we just should be so encouraged and so confident that God is doing a marvelous work in the world. Well, let me tell you the story about Baroness Matilda von Reed. Her father was a very influential man, a governor of one of the provinces in Finland. And when she was very young, she put her trust in the Lord. And by the time she was 19, she had this compassion for the prisoners who she felt very often were badly treated. And so because of her father's influence, she was able to get into these prisons and to have private conversations with many of these prisoners and became well known. In fact, on one occasion, there was a conference of people involved in the prison systems and one of the professors was up telling this story about how many of these prisoners were incorrigible. It was a waste of money to try and reform them. And she stood up in the audience and told her own stories about the transformation of these lives and said, this is not true. And she got a standing ovation and an invitation to meet with the czar. But uh, she refused because she said, if I do, I may lose my influence with the prisoners because they think I've gone to the other side. And so she didn't go. And eventually, although she was from a very wealthy family, she ended up at one point with two dresses. She'd wear one, the other would be laundered, and she'd trade. And then she grew very sick. She almost died. And her father pled with her, Matilda, if you, if you, give yourself to recovery. Although he had been quite resistant to her doing this ministry, he said, I will give you one of my farms and you can use it as a place for released prisoners, something she had wanted to do. And so she said, I will. And she cried out to God and he raised her up from her deathbed. And her brother worked with her in this. I think she was one of nine children, but uh, her brother, who was also a believer, worked with her and they provided a place where the prisoners could work on the farm and so on. And they had a local church there for these prisoners. Just an exciting story. Now, I don't know if you can see her picture. I'll hold this up to the screen. A fairly plain looking woman. And uh, this features in the story. Let me tell you about this. So first of all, uh, when Dr. Bedeker came to Finland, she was his entree into the prison. And uh, on occasion, he had had university professors who would come and translate for him in speaking to the prisoners. But it seemed that uh, things were just dead. Uh, he would speak, but there would be, that people would, the prisoners would stand there sullen, almost uh, antagonistic. And he wondered what was wrong. Well, then Matilda von Reed came and she began to translate for him. And there was an entirely different change. And uh, uh, he could see the prisoners beginning to weep and the movement of their hearts. In fact, 
uh, he quoted uh, an interesting scripture from the 45th Psalm, Psalm 45, verse 5, which says, your arrows are sharp in the hearts of the king's enemies. Your arrows are sharp in the hearts of the king's enemies. And of course, in the New Testament, we read about the Jews, their hearts being pricked. And so here's this illustration, right? And he's saying, the word of God was getting to them. They were feeling the arrows of the Lord in the hearts of the king's enemies. But their arrows of love, their arrows of truth and of freedom and of forgiveness. And so he asked the prison official, what was the difference? I don't understand when this professor was translating. I was saying the same sorts of things, but there was no response. And this is what the prison official replied. The difference, sir, was in the translation. When you said, my beloved friends and my brothers, your clever professor invariably translated the expression prisoners. But this young lady translated it into Finnish as you expressed it in German, my beloved friends and my brothers. The key that opened their hearts was human compassion and affection. They are not used to it. That was his response. He explained it. Well, anyway, Matilda, on one occasion, arrived at a prison, and they told her that there was a wild man, a prisoner who was guilty of no fewer than 18 murders. And... Um, she said to the governor, let me see him. He said, no, no, I can't do that. The man is, is a maniac, and it's not safe for you to do this. And she said, I really must insist. I have to see this man. Well, it wasn't hard to figure out where he was because there were four prison guards standing in front of this prison cell. And uh, again, he appealed to her, and she said, no, I must see him. And so they opened the door and they let her in and it was dark in the cell, but she heard some chains rattling in the corner and she went over and she saw this massive man lying on this board, chained. And let me read in the story here. She says, A slight rattle of chains directed her attention to the object of her search. He was huge, a massive giant of a man. Quickly she walked to where he lay and stooped slightly over him. Are you awake? she inquired. The murderer gave a sudden start as if electrified. It was almost a leap bodily into the air and his heavy irons clanked loudly as he fell back upon the bench. I have come to see you, she said gently. There was no answer. Won't you talk to me? Who are you? he inquired fiercely. I am a friend. I want to be kind to you and to help you. Who sent you here? I've come of my own wish for your sake. I could kill you with one blow, he said. Get out of my cell, he cried hoarsely. But you won't kill me, she replied with a silvery little laugh. That would not be of any use. I want to do you good, not harm, to speak to you about the Lord Jesus. Go away, I tell you. I will not listen. Again, the rattling links as the ruffian put his hands to his ears. Then I shall pray for you at home, and I shall come to see you again soon. We all need forgiveness. And when I pray, I will ask God to forgive you as well as myself. Goodbye. The prisoner made no reply, and she left the cell as quietly as she had entered. Again and again, the baroness visited that criminal and gently pleaded with his seared and deadened conscience. I want to know who you are, he asked. I am the daughter of Baron von Reed, she replied. The prisoner stared at her. You don't mean to tell me that a morsel like you are the daughter of that fine, handsome man, he exclaimed. Of course I am, she said. 
we cannot all be tall and handsome like my father and you. At this pleasant compliment, his hostility completely collapsed. He was silent for a minute or two. It's not the least use talking to me, he said. Nobody can do me any good. My heart is a rock. How glad I am to hear you say that, she answered brightly. What do you mean? he inquired angrily. I'm glad your heart is a rock, she explained, for I have seen flowers, yes, and sometimes even trees growing from the rock, and so have you. A tiny seed falls into the crevice in the side of the rock and takes root and grows and covers the rock with beauty. So I hope some word the Lord will give me for you may take root in your rocky heart and grow. I am praying that it might be so. And it was so. Her prayers were answered. That cruel, unmanageable murderer became a changed man. God gave her that soul. His ferocity left him. With deep penitence, he took his awful crimes to him who said, I will in no wise reject him that comes. Baroness Matilda von Reed. Love never fails.